Okay. Um, so, um, I thought we just make sure everybody uh, knows we have a new member, Pete Saladino. Welcome to the committee. We're really excited that you're with us and able to contribute. Thank you. Um, maybe I thought you just take a little couple seconds and introduce yourself, and then we'll all introduce ourselves. Okay, okay. Um, Pete Saladino, we're on 21, 21 Boyden. Uh, we've been um, here since 2017, we moved up from New Jersey. Uh, my, I have two kids, uh, my, my wife Alexis, and we have two kids. Um, both have gone up through the schools. Uh, Jake is now in third grade, and Maddie is in seventh grade. Um, very active in very active in sports, a lot of youth sports, uh, from both hockey to baseball to soccer, and uh, we have very busy weekends as a result, uh, driving to, to different travel teams and such. But okay. uh, it's it's sort of a privilege to to be in such a great town for that. And uh, that's why we love it. So um, I'm excited Great. to you know, contribute as best I can and to join y'all. Great. Ed? Well, welcome. <laughs> you to a good town. <laughs> Great school system. Great town leader administrator. And, and great finance committee. <laughs> uh, I've, I've been in the town since 1980. So I'm the senior person here. I'm trying to get people up now. Um, three kids who went through the school system all uh, one uh, one daughter and son are well living right here in Midfield and the other two in Westwood. Um, so I went through all of the driving and coaching all of the sports just like you. Welcome to the town. Thank you. Go ahead. Um, so I'm Brent Nelson. Uh, been here for eight or nine years in Medfield on uh, this committee for two. Also been on the housing authority for five or six years now. And uh, Three kids and uh, uh, definitely enjoy living here. So, welcome. That's great. Well, you and I, we, we, met, we, yeah. we met for breakfast. So I won't bore the rest of the crowd. They know me. So, I'll move that. <laughs> and I, I was with Bob. So, <laughs> it's okay. Uh, so, Raptor, welcome. Um, been in Medfield 13 years. I have a first grader and a three and a half year old. And I think this is my second, third year in the work for Three, yeah, you're right, three. Why is it we're having fun? <laughs> Dog years. <laughs> um, I, I, yeah, I've been in Midfield only like two and a half years, um, but we were in Norfolk for five before that. My husband grew up in Medfield, so we have kind of a root there. And I have a fourth grader, second grader, and kindergartner. Great. Yeah. Hi, I'm Pete Michelson. Welcome. Glad to have you. Uh, I've lived here since 86, so I can't compete with that. Um, and I have two daughters who came up through the school system. We're very pleased with the way the school system handled them. And I used to coach soccer and basketball, but I know it was great. Thank you. Okay. Um, Okay, well, our uh, next order of uh, business on the agenda is the approval of the October 10th and 23rd meeting minutes. I guess we only we only have the 10th, the 23rd's not done yet. Um, but um, is there any any comments um, uh, on that on those minutes? Yeah, I just said that one. We talked about briefly before, Brennan. Just. Uh, at the bottom of uh, one of your paragraphs there, when you're talking about the uh, school tax impact mitigation fund, it's uh, on your it's like the last sentence in page five. On your notes, it goes over to, to the top of page six. You're saying the final the final item, which is the tax impact mitigation fund, was briefly briefly discussed. At the previous Warren Committee meeting, it proved at the town meeting such a fund would, would be considered part of the reserve fund for purposes of town financial policy compliance. And I don't think we talked about that, but I think we would really do that. So I, I, I recommend um, striking that because the, the other reserves that we have are general reserves for incidents that we don't know when it's going to happen or what it's going to be for. Uh, this is specifically earmarked to mitigate taxes when when we can, when the schools are being built and we're going out to fund the project. So I think if you strike that sentence, I think it would be more accurate if everyone agrees with me. I think that's right, yeah, because the rest of it reads accurately, I believe. Right, Frank? That, that um, 
That's fine, but you just want to make you might want to make sure the totals. Well, then, then the second part is I look at the two point nine seven million in total transfers, and if you back out that million dollars for the, uh, I still don't add up to that because you have the seven fifty, the sixty eight, the six hundred, and the five fifty one. Is that correct? That's a million nine sixty nine. So, and not. It would be it's not the 1.97 million so yeah so so that was that was my real-time notes right so we should probably double check because of, it also needs to be 11.6 percent so this whole paragraph is supposed to hold together so if you start this okay. I, mean, I could very well be wrong in which case if we disentangle we'll, we'll we'll it okay okay that okay. would probably be why yeah. i would recommend that we not necessarily approve these until that's been done okay yeah we'll, we'll take sense. a look and I know what your instructions if I already looked like I had a tiny edit, just a typo, and he's fine with that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, thanks. I mean, I, yeah. I, you know, I was typing frantically. So I, I you did a best of the job. These are really good. <laughs> Let's get that right. And that's important. <laughs> Okay. Uh, we'll, we'll next meeting we'll take a look at that. Yeah. And then, if, uh, you know, let's just talk about right now. Yeah, yeah. So the million dollars can be included, even though it's dedicated to the tax mitigation fund. It's not funded with an override, so the fund could be reappropriated um, at a town meeting. So that's why, similar to the capital stabilization fund, it would be included in that in that overall. Yeah. Okay. So the municipal building stabilization fund is not included in those in those reserves because it's funded with a dedicated override that we cannot change um, that without, um, because of the override. But we're, we're gonna wind up doing is having four to $5 million in that in a few years, and that will bolster the, uh, make our percentages look yeah. that much better than they really are, yeah. because that's gonna go away all at once. Uh, but, yeah, well, over yeah, a period of time, but yeah. same with the capital stabilization fund being variable as well. Okay. Yeah, we, we do right. spend yeah. money in the capital stabilization. Sure. The, the one that only that we never use, uh, thank God, is the general stabilization fund, right. right? But I think well, that and well, and, and and free cash, free cash, free cash. Free cash. Free cash. Yeah. Yeah. The way the uh, the way I think the way the, the way that uh, rating agencies would look at this is I think they probably I don't know, something we probably should look into, but I think they would consider that part of our reserves, but. Because of the, what she just said, it right. can be it can be changed. Yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. I just say that uh, that discussion, as I try to immortalize it, led up to and culminated with eleven point six. Right. So that's the number that has to be checked and backed out. Yeah, so. Yeah. So I think we can leave it in now. I think we can leave it in, and exactly. the paragraph yeah. is fine the way it is. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so do we want to just vote on the minutes then? Unless there's any other, is there any other comments or questions on that? Okay. All right. Well, do I have a motion to approve the minutes as presented? Motion to approve the minutes from October 10, 2023 as presented. Second. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Great. Okay. Um, our next uh, agenda item is just the calendar. <clears throat> Are you able to check if um, Deb joins? Just in case, because I'm not really checking all the time in case she joins us. Um, and uh, so, Joe, you, you're going to get us those minutes next okay. meeting. And then today is Bob's turn on minutes. Um, we could talk at the end of the meeting whether we want to have another meeting in December. I'm hoping we don't need it, but you know, I think we, we probably could get away with not having it if everything goes the way I think it should today. Um, can we can we start meeting with the department heads to talk about budgets or should we wait a bit? I think we're gonna wait, we're gonna talk about that a little further. Yeah, that's that's next year. We'll, we'll, we'll go through all that. Um, all right. That's all right. Um and I uh I added Pete because it's your first meeting. I, you would theoretically have this meeting because we go in alphabetical order, but 
I added you to the end of the okay, whole thing. So uh, you are you have an easy one. It's the town meeting. So they don't usually do anything at that meeting. So, <laughs> uh, so, uh, so I think we're all set, set there. Um, sounds like an echo there. Huh? All right. So our next agenda item is the um, uh, to talk about um, some forecasted revenue uh, and fixed costs. And the two items we have on the agenda are the property tax levy, which is first, and then health insurance update. So uh, Yvonne Remillard, if you haven't met Yvonne, she is our star town assessor who's been with the town for quite a long time. I don't know how long, but... Going on nine years. <laughs> yes. Uh, and she's going to, you know... Um, where did you sit at the table there? Oh. Just move up, I think, so people can hear you at least. And then um, she's going to take us through some of the materials that um, we sent out. Um, and you should have received this afternoon, I guess. But they're basically... Um, She's going to talk about the property tax levy um, and educate um, even us older people on the committee about how it works. <laughs> um, and uh, feel free to ask questions. Is this some of the materials the uh, Frank Frank's at? Yeah, it's in the Frank's uh, package. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so. Um... <clears throat> Steve came to me and said, can you talk about the property tax levy? And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> I wasn't really sure um, what he wanted me to talk about. He said there was a couple of new members. So I was here, I think, last year, and I talked a lot, so I promise I will not talk a lot tonight. Um, so what I thought I would do is just go over um, the tax um, recap. The last four pages are really important. Um, and then we can look at the levy. And then Steve had some questions, or somebody had some questions on what it would cost if we lowered the budget by a million dollars. And I, I think we're talking about the um, fund for the school when that gets implemented. So I, I have a spreadsheet on that. Um, okay. So the first page we're looking at is the uh, tax recap. And I did. I'm sorry. I don't have 25. 25 is. Um, I would have had 25 levy limit uh, spreadsheet on it, but I'm doing 23 because it's done, um, it's approved, and we all know about it right now with our tax bill. So anyway, so this first page is the first page of the recap. Um, we submit this to the Department of Revenue, and it's basically a summary of everything that we've done, everything that you all have done, and everything from town meeting. Um, so this is the first page. On the first page, it gives you um, the tax rate, and it gives you the overall what has to be raised, both by what was voted at town meeting and those other items that I'll talk about after. So on page four of this, which I'm scrolling down through, is our town meeting. That's not, should be the last page um, that you were sent. So all of these... This is page four of the recap. All of these are the articles that you all work on with the town budgets and um, just various other articles, the use of free cash, the enterprise fund, everything that we voted that has a monetary value at town meeting is here. So these are all the amounts that are appropriated. Um, and then it tells you how we're gonna pay for them. Whether we're gonna use raise and appropriate, that's gonna be tax levy, free cash or from other available funds or from enterprise funds. So it breaks it all out nice on page four. So if we go back to page um, three, which is page five of eight, and I'm, and I'm looking backwards here. Um, this is the local receipts. So um, we use this to forecast um, revenue to offset our budget. Um, so this is also summarized on page three. And then on page two, um, to look here at this, um, it, it gives you the summary of the amounts to be raised. So that top line is what was on page four, your summary of what happened at town meeting. And then there's other things that we have to add into this. Um, 
that can change that are not appropriate at town meeting. So those things are the um, the cherry sheet offsets. So that first one here is for the library. Um, so that's our state aid charges. Um, our snow and ice deficit also comes here. That's this fifty six thousand. That's a that's a charge that we don't always know um, what it's going to be when we have town meeting. And then of course we have the the total state charges. The this nine sixty four seven thirty four. That's our state charges um, that we have to pay the state. And then of course there's the allowance for abatements and exemptions, the overlay, which I always say is 200,000, but it's this is the rounding number. So this number will always change in order to set the tax rate in dollars and cents. Um, and then of course the other revenue on here um, is the money that we get from the state, our estimated receipts, our cherry sheet estimated receipts, those can change um, if that budget isn't set um, by the time we have town meeting. Um, so these, for a few yes. Sorry, I should probably know this, but I just don't. Bayton County cherry sheet charges. Mm -hmm. what, what are we, what is the state charging us for? What is that? Uh, what are they charging us for? All, all, all sorts of things. There's the MBTA, mosquito control. MBTA, mosquito, Mountville um, State Hospital. The state Hospital. You, uh, we had a loan for the state county hospital. County, county it, it was yeah. a uh, charge every year for that. Well, actually, this is the last, this was the last year of the hospital. Yeah. Okay. Was it this year or next year? It's next year. Next year. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Right. So after 25, that'll drop by about 310. Okay. So, All right. Steve, are you able to um, switch this the screen that you're sharing to uh, the materials that the bonds cover? Sorry. People at home can only see the agenda. They can't see it. Uh, oh, oh, yeah. okay. All right. Um, yeah, that would be a problem, right? Okay. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, can you, why don't you stop sharing and then, and then I'll, I have the, just tell me I'll advance it on my end. Or I could stop sharing, maybe that's easier. No, I just said it was yeah, and if you can share, I think. Uh, you're going to have to help me with that. Uh, let's see. You just have to stop and then restart it. Should I do that? Air on here okay. and now. Um, so how do I get to? So I'm on. If I want to do a different, um, I have to stop that screen. Yep, and stop and then do another one. Yeah, okay. Let's see if this works. The, is it the levy limit? I think it's. Yeah. We can go with the levy the limit. The levy limit, okay. It's the tax rate capitulation. We can go to this one though. I was about done. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, so scroll down just a little bit. Far down, you want to go? Um, that's good, right okay. in the middle there. Okay. Okay. So, so um, all right. So in the middle is twenty three um levy, um, and so basically what it is is you have the limit from the prior year. We add on two and a half percent. We add on new growth. Any type of overrides would come into play. And then that would give you your, your limit for that year. And it also becomes the base levy um, for fiscal year 24. 
So then after that, you add on your debt exclusion and we add on the stabilization fund override, and then it gives you a maximum allowable levy. So the maximum allowable levy was 53755556. So if you remember from the recap, I won't make Steve go back to that page, but you have it in your documents. Um, the recap has to be, of course, um, less than that. If it's not, then we don't get a tax rate. So um, it was 53, um, 400 and change. Four. So we, we had an excess levy capacity of 274,077. So we were under our levy limit. You back on that? That's the difference between the 53,755 mm -hmm. and the 53,481. Right. So that's called our excess levy capacity. Um, so if you, you did go back to the. Um, you want me to go to the tax recap? You can go to the tax recap. Okay. Then. Okay. So up at the top, there is the 53481. So as you can see, our budget is actually um, with appropriated and unappropriated, it's 80 million. And with our revenue at you know almost 27 million, we're only charging 53481 in taxes. So if we didn't have all that revenue, you know, you'd be paying a lot more. So we're only really paying out in the taxes, right. two thirds of the actual budget. Yeah. Sorry. Um, and the any, biggest piece of that 26 is the state aid, right? Is, that, is the revenue? Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's yeah. about, it's like a third. It's like nine million. Yeah, and yeah we, nine million. Yeah. Okay. We have the free cash and then the uh, other available funds. Yeah. And the local, receipts. local receipts. Yeah. And the enterprise fund is included in that too. Yeah. So um, now, does anybody have any questions? I just want to briefly go over this. If you had any questions, then I can talk about. Um, the what would change if you you know put a million at the budget for I'm assuming for the school. So yeah, yeah. Well, I, well, I mean, I, I think it's just a, just I wanted everybody to understand how the the whole levy works in connection with Prop Two and a Half, and you know how we're limited in sort of how much that can go up every year. Um, Maybe you can comment on how that's done. Or... So typically, it go, with the new growth and the two and a half, um, it typically typically goes up about three, three and a half percent, depending on what new growth is. Mm -hmm. So up, it's always going to go up that two and a half percent, yeah. right? So it all depends on new growth. Um, this year, we went up 3.2 percent. Um, so that's about what it would run without an override. Yeah. Yeah. So Jill had, had uh, sent me an email uh, inquiring when we had the discussion about the tax stabilization fund, um, the, the tax mitigation stabilization fund, that it might be good to sort of quantify, um, you know, uh, and, and, and as I thought about it, you know, it might, it could, it could, we could use it for other purposes too, but basically this concept of like, if there's a million dollar increase in the budget, what does that do to property taxes? And consequently, if we it went the other direction, right? If we provided tax relief of a million dollars through this tax mitigation stabilization fund, what would that mean to an average household, you know, in town, you know, on the tax on today's tax rate? Recognizing that this won't happen for, you know, the, the tax relief won't happen until, you know maybe four years down the road. Um, so, but we can kind of, you know, she, you, you thought, you want to explain that? You thought it was a good idea to, to I try to look back to my question. Yeah. This couple weeks ago, uh, but I think the gist of it was if we're setting aside the, the funds each year until the project starts, um, Is it? I mean, I think it's just a combination of everything. Yeah, like yeah. How it's going to help? I mean, I, I, people think that they're going to yeah, like, I, shave I, off I, a million. Yeah, I picked a million, uh, and and trying to you know because I think we could use it for other purposes, right? right? Mm -hmm. And so, I think you could just multiply it times if if we want to do four or five million in this fund, you could multiply it by four or five, right? Whatever that tax in, impact is for a million, right? You could right. You know, multiply it times four or five and come up with an estimate of what. What the relief might be in you know four years. Um, so anyway, uh, 
Yvonne did some calculations for us. Good. <laughs> so, I this spreadsheet, which we didn't send to you, but I am going to share it so you all can see it, and then I'll talk about it so that people on Zoom can. Um, is there a way for me to share it? Again, if I hit this, I'm hitting generate all, and I'm hitting this little circle. Oh, there we um, go. Where's that going No, if you, if you share it, people at home can't see it. Yeah. You share it locally. So if I talk about it, I think that's probably okay. Yeah. So it's it's basically just an Excel spreadsheet. Um, and I put in the numbers for 23. Um, so you can see the, so I'm just going to show you how we can do this without me. <laughs> uh, um, so anyway, as when I get asked this, this is basically what I do. So it, I'm taking the original tax levy. Okay. And then you can add or subtract from that, whatever you want. So if you wanted to do the million, okay, so I'll put in a million. <clears throat> So basically, this shows you by adding a million, we're upping our levy to the $5 million. And it's going to change our 23 tax rate from 1543 to 1572. Can you all see that? Yeah. Okay. And so basically, it's a 1.87% increase. So if you had a, a, um, a house value of 500000 your difference is going to be $144.26. So that's what that million dollars is going to cost that house. If you had a $1.5 million house, it's going to cost you $432. So it's basically for one year. point for the year. Right. right. So it's 1.87%. And it works, it works the same way if we subtracted a million. The numbers are they go these they're the exact same numbers except the number the negative, I guess. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, so yeah, they are the same numbers. I think you did but if you back. wanted to do it in reverse, yeah, you put a negative. Yeah. And so you just put a negative in. So you can change it. You know, if you wanted to do um, five hundred thousand, one point seven, whatever, whatever you're thinking. Um, but for a million dollar, million dollar home, it's a difference of two hundred eighty eight dollars. Right for the year. For right. one year. Right. You're just doing why? What if you? What if? Yeah, so what if, well, I guess that's probably, that's probably about right. If we provided this relief over three or four years, it'd probably be a million bucks a year. So you're just doing new tax rate minus old tax rate times the value of the house, right? I mean, that's all that is. That's right. Yeah. 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 So that's what that chart is. It gives you the, um, I just, maybe I should say original tax bill, new tax bill, and yeah. difference. Yeah. So that, especially, can you send it to us? Yes, I'm going to send it to you so that you can play with it all you want. <laughs> and there you go. We'll we'll put it on our website. Yeah, we don't want you to miss the fun. So <laughs> <we'll do it. laughs> but um, and that was part of the reason why I wanted to go over the uh, the recap. Um, so on those four pages of recap, you can find the original tax levy, and then you can just then you can find the total taxable town value. And those are the two key numbers that you need. The rest of it, um, you can just leave the spreadsheet as it is, yeah. and then they'll have it. So when I do my classification here in, in December, and we have a new tax rate in December, you can change the sheet that I'm sending you. <laughs> yeah. Play with it a little more. But um, basing it on this, it, these numbers aren't going to change that much over the next several years. I mean, we don't have a town that's um, the values. We have all this new growth you know, right. with like major subdivisions coming in. So it's it's going to be pretty balanced. So you can see that that, you know, maybe that $144 would be $135. So it's about, you get, a, you get a good feel of where that savings or increase would be. I guess the biggest change would come when the hospital Came online, right? Or when we started getting revenue from the hospital, right? That'll be a nice change. Yeah. yeah. Can I just ask like a basic question? Of course. So, like, I, I think I'm following how we you come up with the levy limit and then you compare it to, um, I forget what we called the number on the other sheet, but and you come up with the 53,000 just from like a time timing perspective. I'm assuming you take that number. And then you compare it to the assessed value of all the homes and you come up with a percent. But does that happen like for the following year or the previous year? Like, I was just curious. Okay, so actually, now 
Um, it is, can you go back to the, yeah. the tax recap yeah. the first page? Okay, so actually how it works. Oh, you need to stop sharing that. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm going to go through this again. <laughs> um, I forget. I, I, I forget what I had to do. I have to stop and then do it again, right? That's, I think. Not showing up in there. There we go. Okay. Oh. Is this the one you have to pay? Yes. Okay. yes that's the one I okay, so if you see in the in the grid, that bottom line is the total. Okay, so that's gonna be the total town's taxable value, that three billion four six six. Yep. Okay. And then that was the was that the number that was on your spreadsheet that three three point yes. four? Right. So that's she, that's that was the number that was on her spreadsheet. Yeah, that's the okay. key number. And then the other one, the fifty three forty one, that's the so the 5341 is what we have to raise in taxes. Right. So you divide that by the total taxable value and it comes up with the 1543 tax rate. The values are developed first. So my values and my sales have to be approved first yeah. before we can set the tax rate. So that's the, so they're they are together, but they are separate. I don't develop values for a budget. And I and I get asked that question a lot. Mm -hmm. The values are based on the market, yeah, it's... and they're based on sales. So basically, what it just becomes is just a part of the formula. It's like I was used to describe it as a big piece of pie, and you have the total town value is the pie, and your share of that pie is what you pay in taxes. But is that like how much the house? What if the house sold thirty years ago? It's like when? What are you assessing it? So we developed the the um the values are based on the sales, the current market sales. Current market. Oh okay. Just, yeah. Okay, so we thank you. I know this is like yeah, yeah. one on one, okay. but so, <laughs> so you'll see you'll notice like um you know property values have been going up, right? So <laughs> it, that's not a surprise. Um and so the tax rate's been going down. Right. Because the, because of the limitation the limit, yeah. of two and a half, right? So that's that's the People think, well, my tax rate's going down. I'm, my tax bill's going to go down. That's not the way it works. <laughs> so. mm -hmm. Right, because the value goes up. Yeah, right. it's, it's an inverse. It's an inverse yeah. relation. Okay. How often do you update the assessed values? They have to be updated every year. They are required like by the law. June or July every year. Is it their cutoff? Or? Okay, so our values are um, our values are based on uh, the assessment date of January first. Okay, okay, for sales. However, um, Medfield is a 453 community, which means we adopted Chapter 453. So our new growth goes to June 30th. Okay. So that's why, so the reason why I, I'll talk about new growth a little bit. Um, then I will leave because I know you don't want to be here. I don't know. really helpful. Really, yeah, yeah. So I give you a new growth number, like right now at year sure. 475, but my new growth actually goes until June 30th. Right. And so that's well after a town meeting. So I can pick up things in <laughs> June 30th for um, additions, building permits, new construction, um, any of that. So that's why that number can change a lot. Um, or, or you know, I try to I try to be as accurate as I can. I look at current permits. I look at what what I know is coming down the pike. Like today, I was driving down Pine Street and there was a house that was demolished, and I was like, "Oh wow, more new growth." <laughs> <laughs> so you just don't know what's going to happen um, all the time in the uh, you know during the year. But we I make my my best guess. Um, so. So I forgot where I was going with this new growth. <laughs> Um, which is added to the which is added to the levy limit. Um, 
I'm sorry. I'll your your cutoff date for values. Oh, my cutoff date for values. Yeah. So that's yeah. June 30th. Okay. Is my cutoff date for values. So um, then my values are developed, and I usually submit them in September. And we we are typically approved in October. I was approved in October. And then we're submitted to the DOR. Correct. Yes, everything has to be approved by the DOR. So the first thing that has to be approved by the DOR is our sales. So I have to submit the sales first. They review all of our sales, um, and then then all of the values can go in after the sales get approved and new growth. So typically, the sales and new growth are approved at the same time. So, and that was in October. Yeah. And then that stuff by is what is like printed in the newspaper. Yeah, yeah, and it's also on your tax bill, right? Right. Your assessed yeah, yeah. value is on yes. your tax bill. So yeah. yeah, the assessed value will be on the tax bill you receive in December. We also put it online. Okay. All of our field cards are online, so you can take a look. Um, okay. And the the paper, the hometown weekly, I send them an excerpt, and then they they print the values. But we do have that also on our website. Cool. Yeah. So thank you. And as, and as we all know, assessed value doesn't necessarily mean that's the market value of your house. Well, our values are based on okay. So that assessment date, January first, we are we trail the market. Yeah, a little yeah. bit. So, okay. Any so other? Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there any other questions for Yvonne? This really is very helpful. No, thank you. Yeah, we we really appreciate it. Thank, thank really you for doing it. The, so thank you very much. And, and that spreadsheet is going to be very valuable. Yeah, <laughs> give us an idea yeah. of like. Uh, I mean. You know, that's I kind of had an idea of what it would be, but it's nice to know. It's yeah. Like, what was it, two, two thirty or two eighty per million or something like that? Yeah, it was like that. It was for that one million. It was one point eight seven percent, which is one point eight seven percent. Yeah. So I was doing a little playing around with it, and to get to about three point two percent is one point seven five. <laughs> so if you wanted to offset like what we typically increase. No. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But no, I, I think I understood the, the goal is to I think the, lessen yeah, the burden. The, the goal is to, to, it's sort of like get a savings account, right? Mm -hmm. So that when we come, when it comes time to, to borrow the money for the school, we know it's going to be like a, say say it's a thousand dollar impact to, to everyone's tax bill. Mm -hmm. Well, if we over three or four years, if we took some money out of that savings account and offset the tax increase by two or $300 each year, mm -hmm. then it's only a $700 increase. You know what I mean? That's that's the yeah. concept is that right. um, we have some time now to sort of save up the money, however we can get it um, and uh, use it for that purpose. So, yeah. yeah. All right. All makes sense. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you. Do this again. <laughs> okay. Update on health insurance. So if you remember, um, we um health insurance was one of those topics we we touched briefly on but it was sort of in the process of being you know redesigned the plans um and so christine's got to update us and i think things aren't final yet but she's going to tell us what she can at this point not much <laughs> <laughs> Um, but maybe I should go back since we have some new members, go back yeah. and give some context yeah. um, in health insurance. So health insurance is one of the biggest drivers in the town's budget. Uh, we're anticipating uh, I think it's a little over $5 million. I just got my cheat sheet. Um, um, so we're anticipating uh, $5 million for health insurance, and we have included in the estimates you'll see in the forecasting um, a 5% increase in health insurance. So we met with our health insurance company uh, a few weeks ago, and they are they will not commit to um, an actual increase yet, but they will give us the range. And they were very comfortable in telling us that we were in the 10 to 12 percent increase range for health insurance. So just to back up a little bit, 
um, last year, recognizing we were going to have an 8.7% increase in the health insurance, we approached um, the insurance advisory committee, which is made up of union membership, um, as well as non-union membership. They're an insurance advisory committee. Um, they're a loosely organized group. They are not uh, formalized. Um, Healthcare is a mandatory subject of bargaining with the unions. So in order to get any plan design changes, we had to ask each of the unions to take a vote. And we proposed a plan design that would get us down to a 2.7% increase, which we thought was a much better deal for our employees as well as for the town. Um, that was not successful. Uh, we needed 100% participation in all the union membership and we did not get that. Um, Earlier this fall, the select board adopted what's called Section 19, which forms, um, allows us to bargain directly with what's called the Public Employment Committee, and we'll form that. Uh, we're actually meeting with the Insurance Advisory Committee Wednesday with our healthcare consultant, and we'll walk the union membership how to form the PEC and how we'll go forward with that. Um, what it allows us to do instead of or individually um, bargaining health insurance with each union, we bargain only with the PEC. Uh, at the table. And so we are looking at uh, plan design changes that could range anywhere from a savings to a 5% increase on what we are calculating. Um, particularly, we're holding on the 5% based on the insurance company telling us to anticipate 10 to 12%. Um, I sit on the health insurance board uh, for the Mass Municipal Association. This is a nationwide um, issue. We're talking to other uh, leagues and cities. Um, and they're all into seeing a much greater increase in health insurance. Um, a lot of people are going back to the doctor uh, after COVID, um, and there's an increased um, cost to providing everybody with vaccinations and testing kits and all that. So we're seeing that across the board, there's a, a significant increase. Um, and we're seeing increased usage over the last two years for our health insurance as well. So we're anticipating we'll meet with the PEC, uh, we're meeting with the IAC Wednesday, we'll formally adopt the PEC and walk them through that process. And we are hoping to have plan design changes uh, negotiated um, within the January timeframe. So, so the PEC, I'm assuming we'll have representatives from and the employees from the schools, from different unions in town. Yes, and they're they're required to have a representative from each union, and that vote on the PEC is weighted based on the size of the union. Okay. And you're mandated to have a retiree representative as well. What falls off of that is right now the IAC includes our non-union employees, so any of my town hall employees, my DPW employees, they will no longer have a seat at the table when it comes to negotiating plan design changes for mm -hmm. the town. And this is hypothetical, and what I hope never goes past. What if the schools say, the, which is the biggest union, I assume, in town, mm -hmm. and the schools say no? Are we then stuck with a twelve percent increase? I think we'll we'll continue to bargain and bring it down from from that. Okay, but everyone should understand that the forecast that we're going to talk about. Um, it assumes that we will be successful in getting to a redesign plan. Yeah. That the school, in other words, it assumes that we won't have no's from the school. And that the Red Sox will sign two <laughs> top white pitchers. <laughs> well, there's a little history that would give us a better indication. <laughs> Um, I think one of the things also to remember is uh, it is hard to budget right to the penny for health insurance because if anybody joins the plan, um, right. you know, any of our employees who are turning 26 and they're being removed from their um, parents' health insurance, like my children will be very shortly, um, they can, they're not eligible to come on to our plan or anybody who has sort of a life change event. So we try to budget with anticipation of people coming on and going off throughout the year. Um, so we do try to leave ourselves a little bit of a buffer yeah. for that. Um, if a, an employee decides to come on the plan, has a life change event, um, it's a $17,000 cost for the family plan for that employee. Does that 5% so, include all those additional yeah. potentials? Okay. Yeah. Huh? Yep. That <laughs> but I just want to make sure everybody understands that point that if, if your scenario comes true, um, that the um, we would need to revisit the whole forecast um, yes. and change significantly. Mm -hmm. 
So we wouldn't be, uh, we wouldn't, we'd have to probably have some cuts, I would think, but I don't know. We'll see, see what happens. Yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, I mean, obviously you could tell that they're in the process of negotiating this. So there's only so much that they can say at this point, but okay. yeah. 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 Did the insurance company give you any ballpark estimate? Because we can't be the first town to have ever done this move to a, a different plan. So, you know, how much changed? I don't know how many? Well, if you look, if you look at last year, changed and, and what, yeah. what was the result of other communities? Well, it depends it's, on each community because each community gives their own their own plan design. But if you look right. at last year, if we were successful with the unions, we would have gone from an eight point seven percent to a two point seven. Okay. So I would I would anticipate we would be looking at that uh, similar plan design change for this year. And you know, we, from everything we can tell, it's it's in their interest to to do this, right? So Absolutely. so that uh, they save because they pay part of the health insurance, right? So they save money, you know, uh, and they I got the they got the big increase. That, that, yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. that was my sense last year. Yeah. I thought they were both well, yeah. self interest. Yeah. So well, the methodology is different. I think that this mm -hmm. chapter 19 election by the select board is significant because it gives different weighting than last year was <clears throat> you're in or you're out. I mean, and it, so it didn't give weighting okay. to the participation. So yeah. the schools, um, for example, have what, eight or nine unions? Yes. Right. Yeah. Well, not that many, but you know, about five or six, honey. Yeah. So five or six of yeah. the unions are school related. So, so and again, yeah. to Steve's point and to, to Christine and the team, this is active negotiation on both getting participants and to get the design. So we don't want to go too deep, but I Obviously, yeah. I'm confident yeah. with your that you wouldn't put a number down that you were unable to support. Just, but you got to get there. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Any other questions on health insurance? So, so there is a um, uh, there is an update to um, maybe Frank. You can take us through uh, this. Uh, oh, I stop sharing. Maybe this is so. Okay, let's see if we can do this here. Um, that's the wrong one. Let's see. Let's... Uh, that was uh Frank, your uh, schedule was was it a PDF or uh the updated uh, uh summary forecast? Yeah. Uh yes, it was a PDF. Yes. All right. Hold on a second. I have to get it up here. Is that what you sent out this afternoon? Yes, yes, it's what it's what I sent out this afternoon. That's correct. Uh, so I'm just trying to find it just so I can um, show it on the screen here. Just give me a second. Um, Actually, Frank sent it out, right? You sent it out. Right. Yes. Yeah, Frank sent it out. Okay. Is it the one titled Initial Analysis? Uh, yes. It's, it's um, Initial Analysis, yeah. Uh, it's, it's, 
That's the Gmail is funny. It's like a bunch of attachments in the thread and look at it. Yeah, it's hard. It's really difficult. I was losing. Yeah. Yep. Steve, do you want me to share it? I'm almost there. Oh. Give me a second. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Yeah
as, as the budget process uh, continues. Um, so that um, the, the basic formula that mm -hmm. this means is, is take all the revenue townwide, take all of the shared fixed costs that both serve the town and the school departments, you subtract that shared costs from the total revenue and the revenue that would be remaining you would distribute 75% to the schools and 25% um, to the town departments. And so uh, assuming this forecast will hold true, that would result in a 4.1% increase in fiscal 25 for the school department budget and 4.2% uh, for town departments. So a little over 1.6 million, almost 1.6 million for the schools and 516,000 for the town departments. Okay. Any questions on that? It, it, it didn't change a lot. If you remember the last time, I think it was 4.0 or something like yeah. that. So mm -hmm. it's fairly close to what it was last time. Um, but if you remember the, the process we talked about, there was a preliminary forecast. This is the sort of the our best shot right now. Um, and this is, you know, assuming we, we agree, this is probably what we would send out to everybody. And include in the letter. That's the last. <laughs> we'll yeah. just do the final before they yeah. get their targets. Yeah, yeah. This will be the final. Yeah. Okay. Um, we've, we've always done seventy-five twenty-five like that, or is that a new approach, or that's always been that way? It, it's at least ten years old. They, they have the history that that's been the breakout. Um, okay. So it's uh, got some history behind it, and. Uh, it well, does. both both groups agree on it, which is which is good. Yeah. So, um, so just to put that in context, um, it's been that revenue has not been as high as seventy five point five. That is, after looking back at, at ten years, that's what the breakout has come out to be. Mm -hmm. um, this that was my is, question, actually. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So this is the first year where we're kind of flipping the budget process um, completely on its head from where we've been in the last probably. Um, probably about 10 years. 10 years yeah. um, in the past, we would start out with a budget deficit. So I would present the budget in January, and we were always typically a million and a half to $2 million over where our target was for the two and a half balance budget. We decided, um, we've been advocating for several years now that that's not, uh, it's not sustainable to do the budget that way. It creates a tremendous amount of angst for the Warren Committee, um, my department, to try within a six to seven week period to cut those budgets after everybody worked hard in the fall to get them what the requests are. So this year we basically started with a revenue consensus um, and we're in agreement on the on the 75 20 best flow, right? Yeah. So um the next thing I thought we would talk about is this letter. I don't know if, if everyone had a chance. By the way, did has Deb joined yet? Not yet. No, okay. I've been keeping an eye on Okay. Um is this letter that um I don't have a question. Um the vocational school when they the debt gets allocated for the rebuild. Will that update that line item? So we don't anticipate it in fiscal year 25. Okay. So it won't be in, in right, right, right. Okay. They may do a, a short term borrowing. So we'll find out shortly on that. Um, I'm just saying they're going to go through the same process for new schools. So we'll need upfront funding. That's what that term is. So they've already done the feasibility. They've done all of that. Okay. okay. They need to go for construction now. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. They're they had the vote and it got approved and they're yeah. they're moving forward. Yeah, so we it's basically it's going to take a couple of years at least. Yeah. Okay, we'll get our first assessment for that. Yeah. Um, will it be separate or will it be in the assessment itself? They'll just they'll they'll send us a, a capital assessment as well as what our normal uh, student okay. assessment is, and we're anticipating that the capital assessment is going to be about a hundred thousand dollars. Okay. Is that would that we'll deal with that next year? Sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. So um, having sort of gotten to this point where we have some some fairly, we've got some forecast numbers, we've done some due diligence on, we feel fairly comfortable with them. I drafted this letter. I don't know if people had a chance to look at it. Um, I did fill in the um, some of the missing numbers here. It wasn't in your draft. So 
the tax rate moved down to 1543. The average tax bill was 3.2% increase, which is a $400 on the average Medfield home. Um, so I did add that to it. Um, and I added in the 4.1% that you just saw. Um, and um, on this page, I just broke out the school and the town piece, 4.1, 4.2. But other than that, this letter is pretty much as you got it. So welcome to uh, take any uh, comments or suggestions or anything like that. Um, Anybody have anything they want to say? About? It's very well done. No, I think so. And so it's, and it, this is not new to them. They all understand this already. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So but it, but as a but as documents. A, yeah, right. The public documents. document. Yeah. Right. It, I, it, I thought it would be yeah. important to sort yeah, of have because yeah. because it does you know they have to deal with other departments. There's a lot of departments and people sort of in town, you know, might want to know how the the sauce is made. So. Um, <laughs> Um, I, I think it also establishes um, the position of the Warren Committee that yeah. our responsibility in terms of owning the budget. I mean, he, as I talked about the progress that's been made in the six years that I've been involved, uh, you know, there was a question three or four years ago, whose budget is it? And I think establishing that is, is, uh, is significantly important. And I think as such, um, it also, you know, as you said, people are aware of it, but I think as a general population of the people involved in terms of department heads, uh, different departments in the schools can see that there's some logic and some and some reasons for what the numbers coming in. As I said, we it's it's uh, to, to reiterate what uh, Christine said. This is a um, proactive position based upon the number we know best, which is the revenue. And as I said in the past, we've been reactive. And I think that's not only difficult for us in terms of the Warren Committee, but I think it's even more difficult for the departments mm -hmm. because the numbers come in and they roll in and everybody gives a quote wish list. Mm -hmm. Now it's no longer, a, they don't have that parameter of a wish list, it's a reality list. And I and hopefully that's going to help each one of those departments. So my thinking was that uh, maybe we, we could attach your spreadsheet to this letter mm -hmm. and, uh, and send it out to um, basically all the elected boards and, and, um, and the school departments. Uh, anyone else you can think of that we should send it to. Um, and, um, you know, I think, uh, I think it's, a, it's, it's, we're not saying, you know, don't tell us your problems. We, we want to hear, if, they, if there are problems, we just want to hear about them. You're going to hear about them. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, we're not saying take it or leave it, but it's a, you know, it's sort of a, a message that there's been a lot of work on this. We think this is very realistic. We want you to do your, your best to get a budget within these guidelines and if you can't tell us why so that's kind of the message uh, i thank you for doing this is yeah. a lot of hard work thank you yeah. for crafting this great okay so do you want to take a vote on this letter i have a quick question and it's it's not um anything substantial but the two dates for reviewing town departments is that going to be oh yeah we should talk about that. is that going to be enough meet like two meetings to review Oh, we are we're gonna make it a goal. I like the goal. <laughs> uh, we're gonna make it a goal, and um, okay. we we've and and actually the next agenda item is to go through that process, and we try to standardize it more, so that you know that they know what to expect. We know what we're you know. So we'll, we'll go through that. Yeah, we'll we'll go through that. Okay. Um, okay. So do I hear a motion? to uh, approve this letter as drafted. Uh, approve, uh, motion to approve the letter uh, dated November 13th as submitted. Second. Second, okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, okay, so um, 
Yeah. Does this become available to, to, to the public as well? Because I think that's important. Yeah, no, your website. yeah good. Because people who are interested can see this. <clears throat> Okay. Okay. So the next agenda item is basically to talk about um, the process, right? Uh, we've we've come to this point. We've got the we've got the um the forecast set. What are we going to do next? And um, this, uh, I think, will answer some of your questions still. Basically, um, so really, you know, as we all know, the the, the our responsibility is to to get a, a recommendation on an operating budget to town meeting, um, and uh, the school committee and select board will you know submit the budgets to us. The Warren committee will, is providing budgetary guidance. To both the school committee and, and town departments. Um, and um, that's within the Prop 2 and a half framework. And the town department heads will first review and discuss their budget needs with the town administrator. The school principals and, and admin staff will first review and discuss their budget needs with the school district administration. And then the school committee and select board review and approve budgets submitted to the Warren Committee. The Warren Committee undertakes due diligence over submitted department budgets and the objectives to understand department spending in the context of overall budget guidelines, department priorities, and any unmet needs. Um, and so um, that's important when you when you go and meet with department heads. Is uh, you know they they've gone through a process with our, with this guidance that we've given with. Christine and the school, and so they, you know, they've, 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 they've done the, some of the battles they fought with Christine already, right. <laughs> um, and so uh, you know, just understand that. Now, there, you know, there, there, there may be things that come up, but just you know, that that are unmet that we should know about, um, and then um, um, we have uh, we have assignments uh, departments. Um, and we'll, you know, we'll do the due diligence. Um, the, um, in December, Peter, I think you asked, is it okay to, yes, we can, you know, we can, I think on the town side, you, you know, the beginning after Thanksgiving, you can go contact any department head. It's probably a good idea just to reach out and, and uh, let them know, you know, you're going to be involved and make contact, you know. And talk about a, a schedule or you know what's what's good for them and when to get mm -hmm. together and all that stuff um and then uh we're trying to do two for the, on the town side we're trying to do two department reviews um and we think it's achievable if we've we've invested some time in the process of information that we're going to get and how it's going to be presented to us and given a 48 hour deadline to get it to us before the meeting. So they know all this ahead of time. Um, and um, Christine uh, and Frank will take the lead on scheduling um, those department reviews on one of those two dates. Um, and so if you <coughs> have a problem being at one of those two dates, we, you, know, you should let me know right away. So we can let Christine know. Um, we might have a oh, you have a problem now. Uh oh, okay. All right. Uh, only because I was just reviewing the select board has changed their meeting schedule for January. Oh, gosh. I know. So, um, but we're happy to set up the schedule. We don't necessarily need to be there. We'll cover the select board meeting. We can set you up at public safety, or one of us can attend your meeting. One of us will attend the select board. We can divide and conquer. Okay. Yeah. All right. Is it both or just you don't know which? Just the sixteenth. Oh, the sixteenth might be a problem. The sixteenth, okay. I know. I know the select board is going to be at six o'clock that night. Is that a, that's a Tuesday? That's a Tuesday. Okay. Maybe we could do a Monday. I guess. Yeah, well, um, it's a holiday. Oh, it's a holiday. Holiday. Uh, holiday. Yeah. Okay. Holiday. All right. Okay. All right. Well, we'll look at that. We'll look at that. Yeah, we'll, we're, we'll we're look flexible at that. With, with splitting up, and if you're meeting with departments, may not even need okay us there to overview that. 
Okay. Um, and then on the 13th, Ed, we've got the school department budget. That whole that the whole meeting will be dedicated to the schools. Mm -hmm. They take as much time as they want. And then um, you know, we're we're thinking the department reviews will commence with a brief introduction and a summary by by one of us, um, followed by uh, introduction of the department head and a brief presentation of the budget request and observations. And we're trying to limit them to under 10 minutes. And then we'd have a Q&A. So I think if we do that, we should be able to, we might have a, we might have one long night, but you know, I think, I think we can get through. Um, so each department head will be, we will tell each department head what we're envisioning is you'll speak anywhere from seven to 10 minutes. Yeah. And then be available to answer questions. Yeah. No, I think, you know, Christine will, 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 will coach them in she'll, terms of what probably send expect. us to them in the And one, one of the things I might add on this, given my, um, you know, Christine and, and Frank have been great, and Christine's totally transparent. And I think that one of the items, and as you go through, you're going to get, hopefully, in, by solicitation, input from the department heads. And, and you know, they're going to express their concerns. They're going to express, I feel as though our role is to listen. But I think the best response is, because she is so open, uh, is, is to come to Christine, not to get into a discussion with the department head on whether or not this is the right number or that's the right number. I think... My my recommendation to us is listen, take it, and if you or we individually say yeah, that's a that's a concern, come back to Christine <clears throat> because it's her budget <laughs> ultimately, and and that in information would be you know already expressed, and and I think we get it better than you know being an advocate for a department come back to Christine and say, this is what I heard and this is a concern I have. And that's my recommendation. Christine, I don't know how you feel that's so. No, that's totally fine. Because in the past, we've, we've, had, we've had situations where people have said, well, you're going to change my budget? And I said, well, no, no, that's not why we're here. <laughs> you know, yeah. Up or down. But, you know, but I do like to ask, well, what, what's your concern with the budget? What, what do you think you can and cannot provide in your total services. And I know that's been a, you know, that's part of the conversation that's already been had. So rather than relitigating it, as it were, in that particular meeting, come to Christine and say, okay, this is what I heard. Let's talk about it. And you can do it. And, and, and then it'll be a less, I guess, uh, less controversy in the discussion. It could be a much more but it's a fair question to take back those concerns, those risks in the right. budget, because they're real. Yeah. And, um, and then, you know, we're, we're going to try to get the materials to everybody 48 hours so that you have a chance to look at them and stuff like that. Um, and I will say so one like, of the things that just to the new members as well, that um, I've always found having been through a number of these years, um, meeting the department heads, meeting the, the departments, just gives a great feel for the company. It really does. You see what the people do, you see the management, you see what what goes into it. And individually, it's great for you, And but I think it's also great to share with the rest That's of the right. committee and to give the people the opportunity to speak before the committee as well. <clears throat> so I think it's a, a good process. Yeah. Yeah, so and so talk about the department information requests and sort of guidance. There's two sources of information. There's this budget book, which everybody should have their own personal copy. This is the GFO, GFAO, GFOA, GFOA uh, award winning budget book um, that has a tremendous amount of resources and information in it. And uh, that would be the primary one. And then there's also this town report, which if you don't have a copy, there's plenty we of have copies. Plenty of there's copies. plenty of copies. There. 
Uh, Take those Christmas gifts. Yes. Oh, this, this, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> this has uh, a lot of great information in it. It actually has the salaries of every um, every employee of the town in it. So you know, it, it, if you have questions on you know that, that's in here. Okay, that was the one of the articles. That was the proposed article last yeah. year, yeah. and that was the uh, resolution too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, so that's that's that, um, and then um, the department head should provide any additional insight or commentary on positive or negative trends that are impacting the five-year budget forecast. So, you know, Frank is we've he's shared with us this projection of five years and expenditures. So we're asking department heads when they come before us to you know give us some insight on that, both positive and negative. Like what's what's uh what's a risk that's in there. Um and then um and then uh and then if applicable they should present to discuss any activity in revolving accounts, investment accounts under their control and funding sources or expenditures not reflected in the operating budget, such as like grants or trusts or gifts. I think the school department does a good job of this in their presentation. They 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 um they pull it all together and you know and, and show us the activity in that. But um so I know and I know on, on the investment accounts that that would be helpful to know like from Georgia. Uh, all these other balance sheet accounts that we don't historically have talked too much about, but maybe she could put a presentation together that sort of educates people what they're for, um, you know, what the purpose is and, you know, um, something like that. Um, and then um, then the last piece here are the numbers. They'll, they're going to pr produce in, you know, like they have in the past. They'll have actuals, you know, for 23 um, year to date actuals for 24 and uh, 25 uh, requested um, item requested amounts. They'll have turnbacks for 20 significant turnbacks. We already looked at the turnbacks, but if they're significant for a department, they'll have that uh, just as a reminder. And then um, and then headcount requests. They'll have they'll have that. So they'll have all that pulled together for part of their presentation. You know. Do they have a template, or we have one that we're going to use for? Yeah. So, so I think, oh, looks like there's that one. Actually, yeah, there's. I passed around a sample of work and looked at it, and it was able to fill out. Oh, okay. Oh, yes. Okay. Did you know that? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, so, basically, what it is. Uh, so you can only have five columns in a custom units report. Um, and for those who don't know what unit, units is, it's our town's financial accounting software. Uh, so it shows 22 <clears throat> and 23, uh, everything that was spent. 24, what's been expended so far, uh, excuse me, so far. 24, what's available to spend. So what's been approved by town meeting. And then right now, the 25 request is all zeros because that hasn't been input to Units yet, but those would be what the department is requesting for for next year. Do you have any flexibility like, you know, eliminating the twenty four year to date expended, and, and instead put the uh, another column in there, just the dollar increase from budget to budget? Because I know when I was going through this last year, you always you, you say I'm always looking for the line item, and then say, okay, how much is it? All right, it's going up. Is this line item is going up to sixty three eighty nine? It was it's fifty four last year. Okay, how much is that? That's nine. Well, what percentage? I'm I'm going through all this math. Meanwhile, the verbiage is going. The narrative is gone. By the time I listen to the narrative, I think <laughs> the last sentence. <laughs> the percent change would be helpful. The percent change or something like dollar and percent. I don't, I don't think the year. I, I never thought the year the date expended when it's December and you haven't gone through half the year yet or the winter and all it is meaningless. If right. you're limited by columns, you you I don't know, I guess we could take out 22 actual, but um I don't know. It was helpful during COVID, but maybe we're past that now. It seems more normalized. Yeah, like you said you were limited by the number of columns. 
Yes. Are these yeah. the columns though? That might be the other <laughs> thing. <laughs> Maybe what I could talk to talk about, Andrew, is um uh Yes, you can talk, but I won't put him on the spot. Um, <laughs> maybe what we can do is we can export the yeah, we can export to Excel, and then that way the columns issue is not mm -hmm. an issue at all. And then we can do dollars and percent. Right. Yeah. Okay. Our own, even if that um, isn't even available in Unix. So, so do you want to keep twenty two and twenty three? And then yeah. Sure. Yeah, if you can yeah. export it, I would keep it. I wish I knew about that export feature. <laughs> That'd be great. Um, <laughs> I like rekey a lot of it in Excel. Oh, yeah, okay, so we'll drop the year fiscal 24 uh, year to date. And then do you want the percentage increase from 22 to 23 and then 23 to 24? No, I think all you really need is 25 versus 24 budget to budget, the dollar increase in percent. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That'll be a big help. Yep. Just, just a point on, yeah. on a couple of these bullets. Um, one, um, the second to the last bullet on um, discussing activity in revolving accounts, investment accounts, funding sources or expenditures not reflected in the operating budget. I think that's really important to um, know what those departments have available to them, because you will find in some cases, um, you know, the full budget expenditures doesn't reflect the funds that are available, and and to you and and oftentimes it's not always oftentimes, but in some occasions that information isn't always offered. <laughs> Put it this way: that uh, it, the revolvers or the different trust funds and the like that come are, you know, sometimes viewed as being proprietary to those departments, and it's important for us to get a full view. So, um, you know, for each department, uh, you know, if you have any questions on that, you can come to Frank, I think, and and see if they as, as an intro, because as I said where they come from and what their uses are and what's and where they are and are not available in terms of spending because in some cases it might give you a, a good insight Great. into the full value so, so will we just be reviewing this sheet in the meetings just have them 10 minutes on this or do we oh, want whatever to... yeah well they'll give oh, it to us ahead this? of time right but so they'll um They'll give us an ex where Excel spreadsheet, whatever it's sure. going to be. Uh, they'll give that to us ahead of time, and that, and then, I mean, if it's fairly straightforward, they probably won't spend a lot of time on it. You know. Okay, so no written narratives, presentations. Um, well, I, um, if they want to, they can provide a written narrative. Yeah, mm -hmm. or they can do it orally. I mean, I think okay. if they address these these points on mm -hmm. here. However, they want to do it. I'm not going to dictate that they have to do it written. Okay. Yeah. We don't have to produce anything written. You, I don't think you have to do okay. it. No, no. But you might want a separate piece of paper if they have revolvers. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. But just to might be in addition yeah, I mean, you, you have to be a little flexible on this and yeah, let them just, let them kind of work with what they have. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> no, no, no that's you, okay. Let yeah. me do the little. Yeah, you'll see that, for example, with the fire, the fire chief presents some statistical information that will support mm -hmm. activity, really same thing, you know, those kinds of things that support their activity and, the, and their expenditures and their resources, I think is. Are they going to put the, the Excel spreadsheet on posted before the meeting so people can look at it? I mean, if we're going to. Everything, yeah, yeah. I mean, everything that comes before this committee is posted online before the meeting. So. You're at the guild have it before you. I'm just saying, it. if we're going to talk through a spreadsheet in an open meeting, we might as well post it ahead of time, or just spread, you know, so people can. Oh yeah, yeah, it. yeah. No, everything, everything that gets, you know, presented and we've okay. gone through tonight is online. Okay. You know, the people can look at it. Um. So. Um, any other questions on that? That's uh, that was a good discussion. I think everybody feel comfortable with this approach. And okay, okay, all right. Frank, 
Can you take us through the municipal building stabilization funds? Actually, you and Brent are going to do that, right? You're going to take us through the, the municipal building stabilization funds. Um, now, let me see if I can pull that up. Give me a second here. I do have that. All right, so this is the, remember we, we there's two sort of capital um, requests that the capital committee goes through. One is related to buildings, the other one is related to everything that's not a building, not associated with a building. We looked at the, not the, the list of stuff that was not associated with a building, the capital budget, and we went through that uh, one or two meetings ago. This is the municipal building stabilization fund and uh, that the capital committee has gone through and they have voted on it at this point. Um, so I'll let, I'll let Brent and uh, Frank take us through this. Yeah, I think the first thing to try to make sure that I have correct is that the headline number at the bottom, which is 1.77 million is in fact the number we approved. But to be honest, it was a screen share, but this was the document we all had ahead of time. I just want to make sure that it the number. Yes. Okay. This gets sent out. Yeah, just mm -hmm. just today. It was late. Oh, yeah, I missed it. Yeah, it was late. So um so so I since I'm new to the capital budget committee, it's an, I like to go back and look at our budget book, which we have, so if you have it on page 248, is the five-year plan for the municipal budget, uh, municipal building stabilization fund. And the second two, column- 248, is that? Yeah, page 248, and it spills over 249. And uh, the second column is fiscal year 2025, so what we're looking at here is the first column in this document. And- okay. uh, <laughs> When each of these items went was gone through one by one, I wasn't present. So uh, if if it shows up in the plan from last year that we all nominally looked at, and it's still there this year, and I don't have as much of a concern, it's when things are new that, that you might want to ask what happened. Why wasn't that anticipated last year? If you look at the total number that was expected, it was over three million. Mm -hmm. But it, this is a little bit more than half that. And part of that, I, I understand, and I guess this was discussed probably in the meeting I wasn't there, was that 1.2 million for the Schilling baseball field repair has been postponed to another fiscal year. Oh, oh so that's a big, big change. As is $350,000 for turf field lights that was moved to a, a later fiscal year. Um, otherwise, most of these charges are in fact anticipated. Um, so up to small amounts of 10 to 15,000 here and there. So the, I just want to point that out, right? So the total amount here, one point that's been approved and will be you know, requested at town meeting and, and for which, you know, some free cash might replenish, uh, it's 1.77, but the, the, the expectation a year ago was over 3 million. So that, that's a change to be aware of. Of the new things that were added in, I think one of the, Things that is most the largest number is uh, and, and correctly this isn't the largest number, but it would appear to me that was the two hundred thousand dollars identified to repair the basketball courts by the public safety building. That's a my understanding is that's a complete tear down and rebuild um, from the ground up for that. So that's that was identified apparently as something that needed to be done in FY twenty five. So two hundred thousand dollars added in for that. Um, uh, and you'll notice as you as you look through, I and mean, I can I I personally may not be able to answer questions in any particular line on because I wasn't there for much of the discussion, uh, which happened at the time I wasn't present. But I would just point out that there are um, annotations as you go through this list uh, for green communities. My understanding is that that is those those such items are items which are potentially 
reimbursable through the state green communities program. Uh, so these are items that may qualify for reimbursement. One, I, I, again, correct me if I'm wrong, but one submits a reimbursement request for those things, mm -hmm. and then the subsequent fiscal year might receive them. So keep that in the back of your mind as you go forward. Oh, yeah, yeah. So having it, like, for example, the, the Blake Middle School has a boiler replacement for right. communities, $100,000. Yeah, it's usually even like four. That's, so that, that is, we, we spend the money and then get reimbursed later at another fiscal year. One hope is back. Right. Okay. And I, uh, I, th I, my understanding is that program may be evolving. Um, well, it's not my understanding. You can look on the website, it is evolving. Yeah. Whether the town of Medville chooses to go to Green Communities 2.0, which is a much higher standard, and thus get first in line for, for this reimbursement is an open question. But I think my, my, my hope would be that as far as what we're expending in the coming fiscal year, we still qualify under the current rules, the normal for the community. So, mm -hmm. and will the department heads just they know about these green communities program and they'll just know once we've made this expenditure now, I'd submit an application to the state seeing if we can get reimbursed. Yeah. Uh, so we work, we have uh, a consultant who works with us specifically on green communities with the facility department. So we handle it at that level. Okay. So it doesn't, it doesn't go down to the department. Okay. Where does the reimbursement come back in to? When we get the reimbursement? It'll go back to the municipal building. Oh, it department. does. Right back. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's the boilers or something that's uh, MSBA eligible. I want to build that. Yeah. We've used so, it in the past. Yeah. Um, currently, we're going to be anticipating using MSBA for the new school and potentially the new roofs on the school. So, um, yeah, you might be able to do the boilers too. Something I don't know, maybe the green deal is better. The green community is probably a better alternative. I did have a question on, I don't know, if Frank, you might not know the answer to it, but maybe Frank or Christine knows it. The and it may just be the wording of it, it says Medfield Outreach Work. Twenty thousand mm -hmm. dollars. What does that have to do with the building? Uh it's it's physical space for them. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Okay. Work in their physical okay, space. Got it. Got it. They uh, mm -hmm. through the opioid uh, settlement funds, we have an additional clinician which will be housed in outreach. So if you've ever been to their office, they're located at the high school. Um, we're taking they have a back meeting room, probably about a quarter of the size of this, and we're just partitioning it into offices. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Got it. That's so it's probably just. Cut off the word work, which should have been workspace. Yes. Yeah. 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 I, I, yeah, I yeah. thought it was. Uh, yeah. No, no. It's uh, physical operation. Their office. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I, I guess I'm going to frame it in a question, but a comment is um, in looking at the five year plan, um, I, I view the, the five year plan outside of the current as being a uh, an information. Piece as opposed to, you know, with the i with the th with the thought that if you don't get it in, you're not going to be considered until you do. So, for example, the the one point the million dollars and one point two for the shilling baseball field. I think the majority. Well, let's just put let's put it in because if we don't, it it won't be allowed because the penalty of not putting it in in the five-year plan is you don't, you, you don't get it. So, and I guess it's a frame and a question in terms of how the committee looks at that. It gives a heads up. I know there's a lot of discussion, for example, on the future costs of roofs and roof repair and what does that include. Um, so I, I, I personally, from a as a member of the committee, I'm not really studying that number as much as I'm looking at it in the aggregate and what it brings in, but and then I'm most concerned about what you what you did point out, which is the change on the uh, on the ba the baseball on the basketball courts. So why did it become more critical than Peter's tennis court? <laughs> That's <it>. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to help you, man. I'm uh, not I'm not <laughs> sure. Uh, I explained this to the Capital Budgets Committee that I sometimes still five years into moving into the town ministerial versus the assistant role, learn something new every day. 
So uh, this summer, a parent came to me and her child was hurt on the basketball court playing street hockey. Um, so if anybody who's familiar with that court, it, there are people on it all the time. Uh, and it's probably one of the very few spots we have in town that's not organized recreation. You see a lot of pickup after school uh, at all ages. And I've seen some adults out there on the weekends uh, shooting hoops. And it's a very busy space. So a parent came to me and said their child was hurt. And I said, okay, we'll take care of it. So I called um, Parks and Recreation and said, we got to do something about your court. And they said, oh, that's not our property. That's the pool's property. Okay. So I called Michael La Francesca and said, hey, we got to do something about your court. And he said, huh, we don't know none. That's Parks and Recreation. So oh, I kind of did one of these. <laughs> and then did a little research and realized it actually belongs to the select board. So I inherited a sport court I didn't know I managed. <laughs> um, um, that is how it became to be on the list this year was uh, it is in really poor condition. Yeah. Um, it's a it's a liability and if we didn't change it this year, um, I was going to have to recommend because I am the fund director, I was going to have to recommend we close it down. Which if you look at the townwide master plan, we just finished the open space and recreation plan. One of the things we're trying to do is find that kind of unscheduled recreation opportunities for our, you know, tweens and teens and apparently gentlemen on the weekends. So I really didn't want to lose that space and that opportunity. So that's how it ended up in there this year. Um, was prior to that, everybody thought it was somebody else's problem until we figured out it's actually mine. Still working on your test. All problems, yeah, all problems. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna figure that out. Yeah. <laughs> Work on this delegation, it's coming back to the hobby. No, okay. thank you. Anything else you wanted to cover on this? I have one question. Yep, I don't know, you know, this is a little new for me, but if you add up the years 25 through 28, and so it's a little bit $700,000 more in the whatever thing we were sent today versus in the book. I don't know if that's a problem or expected or what. Yeah, the book was last year. Okay. This is, 20, this is the book was for fiscal 24. Okay. This is for fiscal 25. Okay. So, uh, so there'll, there'll be things that, like the book where I was talking about 200,000 that were not included in the book last year. So we're going to put the field back in, the showing field back in, just to have the some other it'll, it'll, yeah, so, yeah. So when you re update 20, and that was actually, a decision it, that was made by the capital budget committee, yeah, uh, Dr. Marston and oh, there is, sir, Michael. Yeah, yeah it's uh, already in there. Yeah. 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 So some of them get shifted, yeah. others get dropped altogether. Yeah. You know, from year to year. What's yeah. that? The total can change uh, based on what they vote on? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They can add things um, and Drop things. Right. The, the five year total. Future years are not really binding there. Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah they, they vote on, on yeah. 25. Yeah, okay. But cool. they, they have the rest of it as sort of like information. <laughs> and this is fairly new. Uh -huh. You know, in, in the, like in the three years ago, we didn't have a capital budget forecast yeah. like that. And we came up with fire trucks on fire yeah. and had to, literally and it had little yeah. Yeah, I thought it was really interesting that the request was less than what was planned but then I saw on, on the opposite side the three year request was more than what was planned so yeah it's the capital the capital stabilization fund a lot of the items are in this guy mm -hmm. as well but the dollar amounts have gone up right 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 things have just cost right. more so I think that yeah I think it's more to see that the uh the line item itself was uh you know, foreseen, yeah, yeah, yeah. as opposed to <laughs> so. and it is a good document because you do. I mean, the forecast out gets us to have that conversation of well, why do we need it and why is it that particular year. And then the example of the roofs is, yeah, it's out there, it's kind of moving mm -hmm. back and forth, but it doesn't go away, right? So it stays in the conversation. I have a question. There, at one point, there's a. Um, there was an, uh, an initiative to update this capital plan, right? With sort of um, new updated numbers, the 20, the 20 years. For the building itself, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Does this reflect that? It does not. 
Okay. No, that will be coming. When is that going to be done? We anticipate nine to 11 months. Um, okay. The project was put on hold due to the lack of staffing I had in the facilities department. Oh, right. So, okay. Okay. Yeah. So we should be we should be back on track. Um, so next fiscal year, we'll next come fiscal back year, we're hoping to have it in place. If you remember, uh, last year and the year before, we set aside money in the municipal building stabilization fund for our owner project manager on a consulting basis. Right. Um, we're anticipating once they're on board, uh, we're getting ready. We have to reissue the RFP. We had a, a minor mistake in it. Um, once that's issued, that owner project manager will run this project. The size of this project is too big to have the facility staff running it uh, mm -hmm. on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay. And so things like the roof replacement, these numbers will all get updated. We'll get updated information. Yes. More current. Is. These are yes. these are old. These are fairly stale estimates, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and in January, the Capital Budget Committee is having a planning session, and we'll be talking about what the future of the roofs are. Okay. What our plan will be for sidewalk recommendations to the select board to deal with that on a, on a much broader level. Um, and adoption of the full five year plan. So you've got our votes for what we voted for fiscal year 25, and then we'll adopt the full five years. So we had a department head meeting today and talked to the department heads of, you know, we're getting ready in January to add this next year. You need to start thinking now what, you know, your ask are to be. Has anything changed? You know, have you gotten any grants to take anything off the list? That kind of thing. Okay. Okay. And it's, it's an assessment of all of the. Buildings that they're going to do too. Okay. Yeah. 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 The one we have now is twelve years old. It's pretty old. Twelve pretty years old, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, it's certainly. Old. And at the time, didn't include the new DPW. I call it the new DPW garage. The new DPW garage or the public safety building because they had been so brand new twelve years ago. But now they need to be included in the work that needs to mm -hmm. start being done to keep them uh, in working condition. Yeah. Anything else you want to add on this, Brent? No, I mean, again, the rest can wait till the update on the capital budget can be itself. Okay. For this, I mean, I think I mean, this has been, a, it's been reviewed by the capital budget committee, it's been approved, but we're just sharing it because mm -hmm. there will be an article brought forward with this on it. So, mm -hmm. um, okay. All right. Okay, committee updates. So the school building committee. I attended the last meeting. Um, as you know, Mather, um, Mather you, you all got the email from Mather. So I attended the last meeting. Um, basically, um, it was an interesting meeting. They had um, they had a discussion about um, about planning for uh, including in the plan for the new building space for the school administration. So the third floor, basically, um, and uh, it was Caroline Casey's, you know, uh, sort of idea, and she she brought forward, you know the details of what she was thinking, why she was thinking of it. Um, I would say they didn't have agreement on that. Um, I think there was some some pushback by some people about the cost of doing that, you know, uh, where the, the project itself is already going to be pretty expensive. So, um, and um, it did, um, there, there has been a, um, some good news on the, um, from the MSBA in terms of they have uh, increased their reimbursement uh, on, on project funding. So um, if you remember, it was, oh, I think it was 432 when I did my modeling. They, they did an increase like a year and a half ago, I think. Mm -hmm. And so they increased it to 432 per gross square foot. Then um, they just, increased it again in October to 568, I believe. So it's quite a substantial increase. And, um, you know, I did some very, very rough, you know, calculation. Uh, it looks like it could be an extra, like, 
you know, three or four million dollars. Wow. You know, so every little bit helps, you know, in the reimbursement. Um just gotta get it. Uh, yeah, yeah. If we get into <laughs> just it. Just break yeah. our heart more if we don't get yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Sorry, I guess I was I'm optimistic. So. Yeah. Um, but um and then I you know I kind of think um Christine, what else? Are, I don't think those are the big items, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um and yeah, they're still, you know, sort of moving forward. Um, um you know, with uh <laughs> with their subcommittee on communication and focusing on that and stuff like that. Um so anyway, uh, Mather, you know, Mather was, uh, you know, we, we we have to replace Mather on the school building committee. Um, the bylaw talks about the composition of the SBC, and if you remember, there were twelve voting members, uh, four by the school appointed by the school committee, four by the moderator, and four by the select board. And within the moderator's appointment is this requirement that the one of the appointments comes from the warrant committee and uh and then it's selected by the warrant committee uh, so so i sent out an email a couple of weeks ago asking um uh if anyone was interested in this this role um and um we got two people that are interested pete uh, saladino and pete michelson so uh my suggestion uh after talking to bob uh, we, we we talked about this how to proceed um and how, you know on how we replace mather is um is that we you know we we sort of have a brief um three three minute statement from from both of them um you know they could tell us their backgrounds remind us of their backgrounds why why they want to be on the sbc or or um how they understand the role um, and how to perform it. And then we talk about it as a group. And ultimately we do, we we voted for Mather, so we should we, have, we should take a vote um, and recommend somebody to the SBC. Um, I don't know of any other fair way to, to do it, you know, other than, than doing that. I don't want to pick somebody. So <laughs> I'd rather we all did it together. So um, so does that seem reasonable to people? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So, um, why don't you tell I'll us? Lead us off. Sure. Um, well, first of all, you know, we've sort of just met, so it's a little bit interesting to be running for an appointment of, or a vote here. But I, I would, you know, just like to say, I think some of the benefits that I bring are I'm a parent of, you know, school age children. That I can really bring a, a point of view uh, uh, in that regard, and um, sort of understand some of the frustration that uh, current parents have, and and try to listen to to, to that to that um, to that feedback. I think another thing that might be of of note or of worth is uh, you know, my undergraduate degree was in civil engineering, so I did. A bunch of coursework and some internship work in construction management, which is a good foundation for the tasks ahead. Uh, that's not where my career ultimately went, uh, but it, it, I think it's a foundational uh, element that's that's a uh, relevant. Um, I think also my the sort of most important thing I think is bringing a point of view. Um, I, I thought in the most recent sort of experience. Um, Having a two thirds majority is is a very hard thing to achieve, um, and and it felt to me like the conversation the whole time through was really more about just getting to a majority. And I think if you're trying to get to a super majority, you have to sort of approach things a little bit differently, uh, and you really can't afford to lose too many people along the way. And so I think the I would advocate a a, a lot of sort of listening, community engagement. And, and trying hard not to lose people along the way. I saw, my, my view was that there were people who thought it was too expensive and there were people who didn't like the location. And, and when, you, when you lost too many people along the way, it, nothing got done and it was rejected. So I think um, you know, with inflation costs and interest rates increased, it's gonna be very, still very, gonna be very costly. So I think that uh, from my point of view and what I would represent is that 
we would we should uh, approach it in such a way that we try to accommodate those who weren't happy with the previous uh, plan and, and just be more explicit about that and try to keep it in, in the location it's in and uh, deal with the costs as they come uh, with a number of different approaches. So I, I would sort of take a, um, you know, a, again, just to summarize a viewpoint of uh, the current parent, um, some some relevant experience in my coursework and in, uh, in, in my um, experience there. And then really just about a, a much more of a uh, an approach towards uh, listening and community engagement and, um, and and trying to bring everyone together because uh, two thirds is something that is a different type of vote than uh, just a, a, a pure a majority. So thanks. I, you know, again, I'm just happy to be on the, on the Warren Committee, but it, I, and I respect immensely your many years of contribution, but I thought that would be uh, where I could contribute. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, I'll, let, I'll let Peter Peter talk here, but um, I just want to say we're very fortunate that we have two people who stepped up and wanted to do this. Uh, so, um, you know, you're both you're both on this committee, so you're both qualified. Yeah. So, anyway, <laughs> Peter, go ahead. So, so uh, I, I guess I disagree a little bit with what Pete said. Um, uh, I would like, I think this is a hugely important issue for the town. Uh, I think we do need to get a new school built. But as a member of the Warren Committee, I, I'm already thinking at some point, we as a Warren Committee are gonna be sitting in front of town meeting, presenting a, a proposal for an override. And um, it's very much my hope that the committee as a whole will come to a consensus on a vocation and design and a cost. And then we'll go forth, as you said, and educate the town and try to bring the town along. Uh, I don't enter with a fixed feeling about basically anything about location or cost. It's my sense that the MSBA process is, uh, I am not at all familiar with the statute. I, Yes, I'd have to become familiar with the statute. In my career, I worked 26 years, almost 27, um, in higher education. And so I know a little bit from that, although I wasn't specifically responsible for building projects in higher ed, uh, but I dealt with some contracts in that area. Um, so uh, I, I would view my role as listening a lot at the meetings, uh, reporting back to this committee on what was going on and seeking input from you all if you have thoughts about what all is going on, taking that back to the SBC and, and seeing where, where things are going. It, it's my sense it's going to be a pretty long, drawn-out process. Uh, we've got a fork in the road coming up. If we are going to get into the MSBA or we're not, uh, I really hope we do because it's going to be wicked expensive if we don't. That's going to be expensive enough even if we do. Yeah. Um, and, and I think this would be an interesting way for me to further participate in, in the town. And so I very much like to do it. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you both. Uh, you know, like I said, we're fortunate you're both, uh, you know, volunteering for this. And, and then I have another question. Should we abstain from voting? I'm sort of thinking. Um, and or should we step out into the hall while you guys discuss? Well, you know, that's that's a really important point. I want to mention on that is that uh, I was on the uh, I was on the um, school building committee as the warrant com committee representative. Sharon Tatro had been, and when she became chairperson, she, you know, her time, so she asked me to sit in. And this, in the old committee, this, the Warren Committee member was not a voting member. And it is now a voting member. And that was somewhat, well, it wasn't some way, it was controversial in terms of that's what the committee proposed, and that was what was in the article. But there's a lot of there's an inherent conflict in that. Um, it, it, I, I feel, and and that uh, I think Peter, as you articulated, the the job 
you, you're going to have to have kind of the uh, the wisdom of Solomon in terms of your role there, because yeah, kind of because when you when you when you vote, um, you you really are trying to represent the 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 Warren Committee, but. The Warren Committee's job is to deliberate in all the information. So we really shouldn't have a position until we know the facts. And, you know, in our last um, uh, vote, it, it was not unanimous. So when you're, yeah. you're representing the Warren Committee, but there's no requirement that the Warren Committee has unanimous positions, we had a minority position against the proposed school, right? So I, I think that the real challenge of this position is that is what you articulated. How do you balance that? You know, it, you don't your your vote, and I think this is probably a good item of discussion this to tonight, is is not your vote. It's trying to balance that perspective from the from the warrant committee and really providing information back, you know, so that we can continue to liberate. So, um, and, I, and I think that there is an advantage of being involved initially because, you know, there are a lot of circumstances in the last building committee, but, you know, the pandemic didn't help. And, you know, we weren't as um, engaged initially as we are now much by necessity because of the urgency of the failed vote creating that urgency. So we are more engaged as a committee, but to, but still, again, as a deliberative body, we have to be cautious to be, uh, I, I like to think, biased by facts mm -hmm. and the facts develop and evolve. Yeah, no, I think that's, that's, uh, that's well said. I, I would agree that we have a unique role uh, that no other committee has in town. Um, and this position, you know, uh, is is um, is different than our, than our normal position of just being a liaison to other committees. It's actually a voting voting uh, member. So it's important that um, you know uh, that there's uh, that you know that we're listening and and bringing things back here and and sharing, you know, sort of, the collective view of, of everybody. So, um, is it the because um, it's a warrant committee? Because you, you know, right? Well, it's not. Um, so, what, what was your question? Well, I guess my question would be the expectation on the person that's serving in that role and voting. They're representing the majority of the warrant committee from a vote I, standpoint. I, I, yeah, yeah, I would think. Yeah, like a, a consensus at least. Yeah. You know, um, I mean, the trick with that, of course, we don't want to votes be, are going to come up. Yeah, I mean, at that night. Yeah, he's going to have to. Vote. Some, vote. Somebody's going to have to vote. Yeah. We won't have had a chance to discuss it right here. But but I think on the key, the big issue, right. you we would we would want a dialogue uh, right. with whoever this representative right. is. Right. Right. You know, uh, especially on like a location or something mm -hmm. like that. You know, we, we want to get updates and understand and. You know, big issues that are you know that are being you know decided. Um, you know, you be able to anticipate when a vote would, would happen mm -hmm. and get the input of this committee. Mm -hmm. Sort of what I would say. Yeah. That well, I, and I think to add to that, I think the key would be that I think the desire, if if you could if you could have the desire, it would be that we would, as a committee, have a unanimous position, right? And and as such, I think the discussion on those big items, which we did not have before, we were reactive in the last plan, frankly. And and this is an opportunity to be proactive. So in case of, you know, as, as you just articulated, Steve, that as these major issues come up, as we have this item in the in the uh, committee updates, that we would have a more robust discussion on location <clears throat> and you, you know and and Cost, and, right. and the representative would be able to articulate the, the pieces of the pros and the cons as presented so that there could be a committee consensus 
you know, on those. And so you wouldn't be sitting there going, geez, I hope I'm not. If, if, you're, if you think you're out over your skis, then you probably should be asking for, you know, because it because I think in, in the other exposure is that the Warren Committee, um, even, even when I had a, a non-voting position, a bit of a lightning rod. You know, the Warren Committee member is looked upon and going, okay, so you're going to go back to your committee and you're going to push your agenda or what have you, and you have to be. It's a, it's a tricky, it's a tricky position, and it's not helped by having a formal vote. So, okay. So, getting back to your question about, do we want to stay and should we get out of the ring? I, I mean, I don't know what do people think. What do you think? I don't think it makes a difference. You, I assume you're going to vote for yourself, so. <laughs> the math works. Right. Yeah. Unless you've had a change of heart, maybe, the last five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I mean, uh, do, do you want to do to just say what we think? Or? Yeah, that's fine. Hmm. Yeah, well, I, I, I think, uh, candidly, that your position would be stronger if you weren't representative of the Warren Committee. And as a citizen, so I, I think you can distinguish between that. You know, as, as a citizen, what you can add mm -hmm. in a public forum, speaking for yourself and the background that you that, that you presented, both the parent, your professional knowledge, um, I think you, you'd be, you, 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 you would actually be constrained mm -hmm. by being the representative from the Warren Committee because, yeah, you're a parent, but you're, you're not there as a parent. You're there as a Warren Committee. And so, frankly, I think that um, um, I would say that I, I would encourage you to be active, um, but I think you'd be more effective if you were not the Warren Committee on it. So that's how I would. Yeah, I mean, I, that's I, my perspective. Okay, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I guess I'll throw my two cents in. I think, I, like I said, I think both of you, you know, would be equally qualified and could do the, the job. I said, I would, uh, I think only because Peter's been on the committee longer, has more experience, I think. And I do, I do think you articulated sort of the, the role as I understand it uh, pretty well. So we'll probably lean towards towards Peter. But. Um, I mean, appreciate you guys both stepping up to do it. Obviously, it's a huge commitment for sure. Um, I, it's so hard to <laughs> to stay on the spot, but. Um, I think that your background and your interests as a parent, um, I think could, you know, aid in the process. Um, but I think with Peter serving on the warrant committee a bit longer, serving on a different committee as a representative of the warrant committee, I think there'd probably be a longer, um, better position for you. It's just understanding a little bit more of the workings. However, I was gonna ask, we talked about in the past, alternates or backup yeah. for Mather, would this be a situation where that could be obtained? Or are we saying it's one and well, we only can appoint one person, but right, yeah. I mean, I right. think what we've done with um, you know, scheduling conflicts in the past, I well, by the way, I do think that you know, this is a long project, so right, I don't anticipate. You know, we got almost a year with Mather, not quite a year, but I don't anticipate. You know, whoever gets on this committee is going to be there for the full five, six, five years, whatever long it takes. Right. That there will be opportunity for other people, you know, you know, to to get on it. But I think what we've done with scheduling conflicts is just Bob or I have sort of stepped in to, like I did, you know, last week uh, to go to to go to a meeting. Um, but um, we do have to do, we have to just pick one person though right now. Right. But there will be an opportunity, I think, for other people to. To uh, like I said, this is I think there are natural breaks that make it logical where someone like with your background 
when they get into the design of a building mm -hmm. might be helpful mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. uh where um but i you know we're at you know up to that point when they you know while they're when they're doing detailed design they're constructing and they're doing all that stuff it's a totally different project mm -hmm. than it is right now right so, right it is yeah. and it's uh, deep in the weeds yeah it's very very much so and that sometimes was um the difficult translation process in the last yeah. go around it's just kind of like explaining the process how it works with these con construction companies and yeah. architects that are brought in but um i mean i think i would vote peter for for tenure but i would encourage the background and questions as he represents updates to the committee because i do think that's very valuable experience mm -hmm. um i don't think i have a lot of substance to add other than that okay. i really appreciate that you both volunteered because i was not eager to do that personally so i'm really really thankful that you both did but okay. i think i would support peter for most of the reasons already said okay and i echo everything that well okay. said yeah. but i can say i think peter has a unique ability to listen to someone speak and then ask a very direct poignant question and i think that <laughs> Ability will be needed in that in that committee. So I would uh, vote for Peter. Again, thank you for volunteering. Yeah, <laughs> you. You stick uh, around. Yeah, <laughs> there's plenty of volunteer opportunities. <laughs> we got some we got some articles coming up. <laughs> Brent, yeah, we can give you a good article. I don't have anything to add. Okay, so sorry. Okay, so let's uh, we have a motion to appoint to, to a, Peter, Peter, Mickelson. Peter Mickelson as the Warrant Committee representative to the School Building Committee. I right, hear a second. 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 Okay, all in favor? All right. All right. All right. Okay. That passes. Okay. So uh, I think we've got our update from the Capital Budget Committee. Is there anything you want to update us on, Christine? I don't think so. I think you're getting most of it. Yeah. Okay. Peter, you look like the dog that caught the school. Yeah, bus. no, I'm thinking it's caught. Yeah, it's caught. Yeah. I was excited. Yeah. Um, Anything else? Okay. Um, do we hear? A, is there anything else anybody wants to cover? No. Sorry. We, to to adjourn. we went over a couple minutes here, but. Okay. Motion to oh, yeah. adjourn. Okay. Is there a, sec a second? Second. Okay. All in favor? All right. Thank you.